So Matt, when I invent that time machine, let's make a promise to each other <laughs> to never ever go back to the dark ages because it sounds horrible. <laughs> Today, yeah. Matt and I at Really Dicey, we're reviewing Call of Cthulhu's Dark Ages, the third edition. Um, it's a book with a setting in the... Anglo-Saxon England between 950 and 1050. This book is terrifying, not just because of Cthulhu. Uh, it's just, it, the, the writers have done a great job with giving so much details to game masters or to keepers um, for, for this setting. It's, it's, it's a marvelous piece of work. Um, I, I sometimes got lost reading it, to keep forgetting that this is a game book, not a, not a book of history. Um, they 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 go they go so deep into uh, living conditions, religion, um, for either Christianity and pagan. Um, what 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 did the Roman architecture uh, did for that for that area? Um, uh, what was the politics like back then? Um, what was it like living in a in a in a uh, I don't know if village is the right word uh, at that time, worrying about uh, these Viking invasions happening. Um, almost all the time. Uh, what, what was it like? What was medicine like back then? Um, what would? What is the law like back then? What? What would? What would? How would? How were like? How did people socialize back then? It's it's incredibly thorough, um, and it makes me really glad that we're living in the age we're living now, <laughs> despite all the craziness happening. Uh, Matt, what did you think? Well, uh, as you said, this is a fantastic book, uh, and this is a update of a previous book. Um, they both updated it to the seventh edition Cthulhu and they've expanded on it um, both by increasing the page count. This book clocks in at uh, over 250 pages uh, as opposed to the previous one which was a little under 200. But not only did they increase the page count but they turned it from a complete rule book into a supplement. So that gave them more room um, to use for the information. So um, firstly, this is an absolutely beautiful book. Uh, it's got lots of um, reproductions of actual Anglo-Saxon tapestries and illustrations. Really, really lovely. You're in a whole new setting and it's very different. And so this book gives you everything you could need to play in that setting. You've got, uh, as you said, you've got information on it. what settlements are like in society and culture, um, family life, economy, taxation, food, clothing, travel, entertainment, um, poetry. You know, uh, the oral tradition was very um, important. There's, there's, um, there's some new rules in here to, to kind of um, allow you to work with that sort of thing. There are new combat options um, because there are a lot more shields and mounted armor than there what there is in the, the uh, modern era, of course. So aside from all that great information, um, you get a map of Anglo-Saxon England with uh, several locations and mythos connections, both real uh, real locations and and uh, fake locations, uh, fictional locations. Um, you get a lot of information on how the Dark Ages uh, differs from the High Middle Ages. So one of the, the tricks with this game is if you say to your players, oh, well, let's play Dark Ages Cthulhu, uh, they might be, you know, w whatever you talk about a medieval setting, everybody thinks, oh, well, you know, knights and armor and full plate and lots of things that came much later. So this is a different world. Uh, and has a much different feel. You know, this is before the conquest, before the Normans. So uh, the book lays that all out for you very clearly. And you um, you get into some chapters. Uh, we get really into the nitty gritty rules of the chapter on making Dark Ages investigators. So most of the uh, steps for creating an investigator are going to be the same as the regular book, and they refer back to the regular book. You'll need the regular book to play this game, the regular core book. But some things are changed. There are different life events, as you can imagine. There are uh, different occupations, beggar and, and cleric, 
and guard and shopkeep and monk, you know, uh, heretic and woodsman and all sorts of great things like that. Um, there are different skills and there are also different interpretations on, on uh, standard skills. They include a section on naming your character, which is really useful. <laughs> Anglo-Saxon name being different. There's a lot of information on um, special rules for this game. You know, how diseases are handled. They talk about the bodily humors. They talk about uh, lunacy, idiocy, and that sort of thing. Uh, they talk about sanity. Sanity is a little different. Well, sanity is not different. It's really kind of insanity. So. In the modern age, uh, the mythos usually causes insanity by attacking your character's reason and their sense of scientific reality, like, you know, impossible angles and, and things like that. Um, in, in the Dark Ages, the mythos really um, offends faith and identity. So, you know, let's say a, a deep one shows up. Well, um, paradoxically, your dark age investigator is going to have less of a problem with it because it is a sea demon and his worldview believes in demons. The problem is going to be when this demon rampages into a holy place and just starts ignoring crosses and slaughtering monks. And then, you know, that's going to offend, you know, your Dark Age investigator's sense of faith. And, uh, you know, even, even if your, your, dark, your investigator is a, a pale pagan, worships the old, uh, the old ways, you know, so the, the sea demon bursts into a holy, a holy grove and, you know, he starts tearing down things and, and your protective charms don't work, that sort of thing would affect the sanity of a dark age investigator. So there's a whole different mindset. Um, there's a set of beliefs, both Christian and pagan, and the, the book does a wonderful job laying that out for you. Um, one other big difference uh, between the dark ages and contemporary Call of Cthulhu, books. Books are very rare and literacy is even rarer. So you can't just drop a hoary book on your investigators and then they'll flip through the book to learn something and go insane because it's going to be really incredibly hard to find that book and most of your investigators won't be able to read any. <laughs> so what do you do? So um, what this book suggests is you use the oral tradition. So the mythos isn't encoded in books, it's encoded in stories and poems and it is and uh, you know you don't you don't read the the old scary book you talk to the old scary hermit who lives outside of town and he cackles at you and inside his insane raving somewhere in there is contained the mythos knowledge that you need and that will also blast your sanity <laughs> so uh, it requires a different set of skills from the keeper and this book really helps you set that up, different ways to set out clues. You know, it also deals with things like violence and horror in the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages were incredibly violent and violence just isn't going to have the same sort of effect on your uh, Dark Age investigators. You know, it's not gonna cause the same level of sanity if they see, you know, a dead body if they're used to going to public executions. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there are certain, there are definitely things that, that scare them. Starvation community is very important. So anything that attacks the community or their sense of identity. So the book tells you how to do that. You know, how to, uh, how to scare your players, but do it within a dark age framework dozens and dozens and pages and pages of mythos locations throughout all of Europe, including, this is fantastic, including uh, Exum Primary, uh, Priory, Exum Priory, which appeared in the short story Rats in the Wall. The Lovecraftian story Rats in the Wall takes place in a, 
Anglo-Saxon friary, and this is about the beginning of that. So that's really neat, a nice tie-in. Um, but you've got dozens of cults and heresies and strange forgotten villages in the woods that worship primal gods. Uh, you've got mythos monsters, you've got beasts, you've got not, you've got some new spells, and you also have, um, you know, kind of a dark age take on spells. You've got some advice on how to translate the mythos into the dark ages. Um, little, little tips like um, when you're naming a monster, don't give it the same name. Give it a different name. Make up a name. Give it an incorrect name. You know, the whole idea of the mythos is that we can't understand it. Uh, and it's, it's uh, you know, it's changing. And if you add in that running a game, you know, a thousand years earlier, <laughs> things are getting to get even stranger. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's got some advice on there. They've got some advice on how to mix the mythos with the myth. You know, how to take, how to take Anglo-Saxon myths like Beowulf and kind of, twist them by adding elements of the mythos. So, there's some great ideas on how to create new monsters and new feelings. They shake things up, make them seem fresh to your players. The book also comes with a sample setting, like a whole fortified town um, for you to set your campaigns in. And that includes NPCs and the town's got a monastery outside it. You've got a map with different locations. You've got all sorts of story seeds and you've got mythos options. You know, um, like a, a character, an NPC might have two or three different mythos options of things that could be going on with them. Obviously, you don't want to use all of them because that would get too, too weird. <laughs> but, you know, you pick one or two little things to, to get your mind going. So that's really great. And then you have three scenarios in the book, which all center around the town. Um, the first one is kind of a straightforward monster hunt. And that's a really good introduction to the whole game. Uh, the second one is an investigation heavy scenario uh, revolving around a demon haunted monastery. That's a lot of fun. And the third one is um, kind of a non-linear uh, adventure involving politics and, and lots of secrets and kind of a haunted wood. So you've got three good solid scenarios to, to play with to get your group started. And uh, then to round it all off, you've got some appendices. Uh, you've got a who's who. Um, you know, historical figures, important historical figures, get a timeline, you get a, gro a glossary of the Middle Ages, and then a bibliography. Yes, a bibliography, if this wasn't enough research for you. <laughs> so um, put all that together, and you've got a great uh, book and a tool for expanding your Call of Cthulhu in a whole new direction. Um, I don't know, this would, this would appeal to Call of Cthulhu players, obviously, who want to try something different. It could also be a, a great way to get some fantasy role players into Call of Cthulhu. Right? If your group is, is strictly D&D, this might be less jarring to them uh, than playing in the 1920s, because, you know, they can still use a sword and a shield. I, re I really liked it. Um, you know, I have a Halloween come game coming up this year, and I'm considering running something using this book. Oh wow! Okay, that's that's pretty high yeah. praise. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I thought this book was uh, tremendous. It kind of opened my eyes because um, I think I uh, I've kind of meshed in my mind middle Middle Ages with the Dark Ages a lot. And, you know, when I first uh, opened a book, and I, again, like you mentioned, I was expecting uh, knights and, like, stats for, like, different weapons. Uh, sort of like a little D&D. Little &D. That's what I expected. But, no, it's, um, right. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's brutal. It's, uh, you, you're lucky if you have a spear. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, the, the world is just as brutal as 
almost as brutal as the monsters in the uh, in the mythos. Sometimes, you know, uh, you can easily die from. I mean, right now we're considered old age <laughs> if we were living in the dark ages right now. <laughs> you know, uh, so yes, it's, that's true. Funny, you look through the NPCs of the town, and everybody's in their twenties or thirties. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, rulers of the town. That are <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna say it's a different mindset it's a yeah. different world yeah so I, I i definitely highly recommend this game especially if you like you say if you love uh dnd uh although remember this is a this is a horror game not if you're expecting to level up you're gonna get a very nasty surprise because uh, it's not oh. that type of game <laughs> but uh it's it's a it's a horror yeah. game and uh it's but it's still just uh i i, I love the setting yeah well there you go Really dicey recommends. All right, and uh, if do you have second edition? You have the new edition. Do you like Dark Ages in general? Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. We though we love to read them. So um, <laughs> yes, everyone, take care and have a good day.